Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to beat Scrutinize. This is going to be like a little Scrutinize guide for you if you're new to the game. Uh, this is going to be like a little tutorial to help you through it. Because if you're anything like me, with the attention span of a goldfish, you probably clicked on the how to play over here. And you started scrolling. And scrolling. And scrolling. And scrolling, you get the point. So it's a lot It's a lot to take in. And if you're anything like myself, I'm a visual learner. I don't like to read. So hopefully, I'll try and keep this video as fast, concise, to the point as possible. So uh, without getting too much into it, let's just get started. But if you guys like the music for this game, I actually made the music. So if you, don't, if you like it, uh, if you don't mind dropping a like on the video for that, I appreciate it. If you don't like it, that's cool too. But anyways, without wasting your time, let's start a new game. For the purpose of this video, we're going to do casual mode. You can do detective, and it'll still be applicable or normal. Uh, but I'm just going to do casual just to keep it easy. All right, so as soon as you spawn in, this is what you're going to want to do. There's seven windows in here. So each window, as soon as you spawn in, you want to close it and then lock it. So close left click, and then right click is going to do the lock. If it's on the right side, that means it's locked. So we're actually going to go to every room. There's technically four doors that you can go through, but there's more rooms. So this one's already closed, so just right click and then it's going to lock it to the right side. If you look in here, this is where the router is in case your internet ever goes off. You just go over there and click it and then you can restart your internet. Um, so this is actually the bathroom. There's no window in here, but the light can turn off, but I'll explain that later. So if the lights aren't already turned on, make sure to go and turn them on. There's a little light switch here, so if it's off, just turn it on. Uh, this is also where you're going to do the breaker in case you uh, accidentally pop the fuse, and we'll explain that later when it's applicable. So you're going to go to this one over here, lock it, close it. Pretty simple stuff. Um, make sure that's locked. It's on the right side. I like to keep this closet door open. Uh, I'll explain that later as well, but basically like one of the killers can get inside the house and if he's inside the house he's usually hiding in this closet so if the closet door is closed and you didn't close it then it's pretty much guaranteed that he's hiding in the closet meaning that you do not want to open it and you want to play it more safe so now all one two three four five six seven windows are locked closed and shut um yeah i need to read that email and check out those bolos now we're going to go in here and basically you want to open report desk this is going to be your little hub and so you're going to click and drag this little uh, suspicious person report. You're going to read through the report. So this one says, coming back from getting a late night snack. I passed through the park on my way home, blah, blah, blah. And so what you're going to want to do is, since this one says unknown, we have to figure out who it is. So by doing that, we're going to open up DMV database. And we're going to input some of the information here. So the age says it's between 25 and 35. It says the height is about 6 foot. And the weight, I usually don't enter in the weight because then sometimes it'll mess it up. But you want to keep it a little more broad on the weight category, I think. Uh, the hair is brown. The eyes are brown. And that should give us a pretty good indication on who we're looking for. Uh, we forgot to put in the gender, which is why there's so many results. And so usually it'll just give you a couple of these. So now we're going to take a closer look. So if you recognize we put the weight, or we didn't enter in the weight. So now it says 215. Uh, who's the closest to 215? Probably Hoyt Powell or Hilton Woods, one of these two. And whoever's closer to six foot, this is about the same. So it could be either one of these guys. So we're going to have to look up both of them. But this one's Hoyt Powell. So once we have their little ID card, you can either drag it in here if you'd like, and it'll input their name. Um, so now we're going to open up and crack their phone. So you're going to open up the rootkit and the SIM, SIM database. And so we're going to put in his name, which is Hoyt Powell, if I could spell that correctly. You're going to search, and then it's going to give you a code. You just click. You control C if you're on Windows. Uh, I don't know what it is for Mac. And then paste it with control V on Mac, or, uh, Windows. Paste that little number, connect. You're going to do a little little mini hack mini game. Uh, so basically, you're going to take this dial, drag it slow, listen for a little sound like that. You're going to crack it before the timer runs out. If the timer runs out, it's fine. It just takes like two minutes to reboot. So you just kind of have to twiddle your thumbs until uh, until that reboots. So we're going to try and see if this guy's a little suspicious. Um, so you go through his search history. If you say drugs like Quaaludes kind of sounds a little suspicious because why would someone be using that? 
Uh, so if you think that's suspicious evidence, then you're going to take it and drag it in the evidence. I'm not too sure that really it makes him suspicious, so I'm going to uh, keep looking for information. But basically, read through the little report, and if you feel like this kind of relates to that person, then it's usually that's the person. So I'm going to look through his pictures. Doesn't look that fine. Uh, let's look through here. So blah, blah, blah. It sounds kind of suspicious. They're talking about like some like weird operation here. So I'm going to pick this one as our evidence because I think that makes them sound suspicious. I think this is the person uh, because based off of, let's see, what did it say? Uh, coming, running up to me away from his friends in a hurry, asked if everything was all right, got defensive, asked me if anything was wrong. So he seems to be talking to his friends and there seems to be some suspicious operation going on, which make, which leads me to believe that it's him and not Hilton. So we'll just see if we're right. So I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to close out of this. We got all the evidence one out of one here. We're going to click. And then if they're, if they have, if we have no evidence on them, then you're going to click and drag over onto the fat or the shredder and shred it. And then if you think you have all the evidence, uh, you put it to the facts. So if you look right here, uh, you can mess up five times. You get a rejected report. So I'm going to run it through the facts. Hopefully we don't get one. So we were correct. We didn't get a thumbs down, which is good, obviously. Um, but if you look at here, this little room, the go to bed early quota, if we get four, uh, if we get four reports done, um, then it'll automatically progress the night. If you want to not do reports and just progress the night, uh, then you have to do at least two and then you have to wait for it to get to 4 a.m. So you just have to survive until you get to 4 a.m. So in terms of survival, this is what you have to do. So you have to double click on the security cameras, uh, press space. And hold it just for like a second or two just to get just to get a little bit of light. If you hold it for too long, it's going to pop the breaker, which you don't want to do. So what I like to do, there's three cameras, is just look for like a second with the light on and then turn it off and then switch. And usually I cycle through one or two times. And if you hold it down too long like that, then this will happen. So then click F for flashlight. You want to turn around and we're going to go to that breaker that I was talking about earlier. Which is good. So now... We turn that back on. All the lights are on, hopefully. And so usually after you complete a report, um, I like to check the cameras and I like to go around the house. Uh, check and make sure that all of the lights are still on. If any of the lights are off, that means that uh, someone's going to be trying to pick the windows and get in and murder you, which you don't want to happen. So if any of the lights turn off, make sure to go and turn the light back on and then check the window because usually the window might be unlocked. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the game. Uh, but since we had an unknown one at the beginning and we, now we have a regular suspect, let's just do this one real quick. So this one is a lot easier if you have an actual name because uh, you can just type it into the SIM database. Isabella Rolden. I'm going to search. And usually it's like pretty clear cut whether they're guilty or not just based off of their search history or their text conversations or pictures. Um, half the time you really don't have to read the report. Get the crack. So now, here, without even reading the report, let's go through search history. Uh, track my device, does he love me quiz. That just sounds like a normal person. None of these look suspicious. Picture of a squirrel. Text conversations, Alex, Rachel. Okay, so this looks pretty This looks pretty clean. So I would just, off of my gut instinct, just shred it. Um, but just in case, like when you're playing on normal or a higher difficulty, I'd like to check the cams uh, before and after you submit. Ah, crap. We popped the breaker. In the very first patch, you could hold it down for a long time, but since the recent update, you can't really hold it down that long, so that's why I keep popping it. But So I'm going to check the check the lights again, too, just to make sure that none of them have gone off. Oh, shit. So right here, the light, the light turned off. This is actually a good thing. So we'll turn the light on, please. You have to click it one or two times. Go over to the window, and it's still locked. So it's on the right side, but make sure that it is still locked. Sometimes the light's off for too long. Oh, shit. This light turned off, too. That's not good. Um, light switch is over here for this room, by the way. So now we have to check these two windows. Because if the light is off for too long, then the window will become unlocked, and then you're basically dead. So now that we know that she's pretty much uh, like innocent, I'm just going to take it, and I'm going to shred it, and hopefully you don't get one. Perfect. So we're two out of four. So now, same thing. Wendy Vargas... Wendy Vargas, search, copy, paste, 
Let's crack this. Um, and then we can do her in just a sec. So there's also different things. If you're not getting enough uh, evidence through the her phone or... Um, yeah, basically the phone. You can also click on their records, their police records. So we can run a search on the police records to see if she has any past offenses. I haven't really used police records or social spy too much. Social spy is like basically their social media. Like that came up with nothing. So that was kind of a waste of time. Usually I feel like your time is best spent going through their phone because that usually tells you whether they're guilty or innocent, like right off the bat. And if you need more information, then you can go through these. But like, I don't know anybody who would post on social media like anything incriminating. So you can go through there and you can drag it in the evidence if you'd like. I just don't think it's worth your time. And then the last one is the debit card, which sometimes come in handy. I know uh, this has come in handy before. So the order of importance, I would argue, is that you want to check the phone first if you have access to the phone. Then, if you're still looking for more, go through their purchases. So you would click on this and then drag the receipt in. Um, so yeah. And then eventually you'll get money. Uh, which will show up up here, and then you can buy upgrades such as buying like an instant root crack. So meaning that instead of doing that little hack mini game, which will get harder as the game progresses, you can just instantly crack it. Um, let's check the cameras real quick. Oh, perfect timing. Tanner the doctor just tried to uh, ruin our day. So if we didn't flash him, he would come in and kill us. So it was actually good timing that this actually happened. And since we're taking so long, because I'm trying to explain it. Uh, everything's starting to happen, which is good. So if you look in the, the top left, it says it's red, uh, meaning that the internet went out. So we have to go back to that first closet that I mentioned, and we're going to have to reset the internet real quick. So all you have to do, it's really easy. All you have to do is go back here. The light is red. You just click on it. It's going to do a couple beeps and boops. And you should be on your way in just a couple seconds. And as soon as all of the lights turn green, uh, you're good to go. So uh, the rest of the video basically... Uh, you just have to keep repeating the process. So I like to search the cams before and after uh, you submit. And then before, also check all of the, the room lights and everything. So I'm going to speed this part of the video up just not to waste your time. Also, I forgot to mention that all of these reports as of today, which is August 13th, 2020, they have the same outcome. So you can start writing these down like I have. I have all of these. I have like four different pages of notes with the different names. So if you have a name and you look at it and it says uh, to shred or they're guilty, then you can just go ahead and shred it right away. So this one in particular, without having to look it up, I wrote down unknown, 8.30 p.m. This one's a shred. So if you look at my notes real quick, uh, I'm not sure if you can see this. Right there in the middle, it says UK, 8.30 p.m. or a.m. shred, meaning that unknown for UK and then uh, shred. So. Uh, before we shred, though, this is very, very important. You do not want to mess this up. Before we shred the last one, because as soon as we shred or fax this one, uh, it will go to the transition from the end of this night to the beginning of the next. And if a light is off in the house, when you transition, you will automatically die. I've died so many times doing that. Also, I keep tripping the breaker, and I apologize for that, but... We have to get up anyway, so it's not a big deal. Basically, Tanner's not there, which is fine. So now, before we sh submit the last uh, report, please, please, please check all of the lights. And if you feel like a light's going to go off in, like, the next, like, 10 seconds, then you might as well just sit here, cycle through the doors until the light goes off, and then turn the light on. Because I can't tell you how many times I've died. Like, let's say I just checked all these, I run to the computer, I shred or fax, I will die because the light turned off in those 10 to 15 seconds. So go with your gut instinct. Uh, so we're gonna take this and I guess we can check one more time. I don't think we need to, but yeah. So now we're just gonna shred it, should be okay, and it should transition to night two. Yep, we didn't get a thumbs down. So now if all the lights in the house are on, we get night two like this. Otherwise, we would die instantaneously. So basically, you just repeat this process. Rinse and repeat. Just make sure to check the cameras often and check uh, before you submit any paper or after, whatever you want, except for the last one, to make sure that all the, the lights in the house are on. Otherwise, you will die. Uh, but that's pretty much it. 